Hello everyone, uh, my name is Peter Houston. I'm the Archivist and Special Collections Librarian. Today I'm going to be giving you a virtual tour of the Mount Royal University Archives and Special Collections, uh, where I work. Uh, we are on site today. Well, you're doing it virtually, but I'm actually in the building, as you can tell. And I'm just going to, usually we would do this in person, but of course, because of the pandemic, uh, we can't. So today I'm going to be giving you a tour of our facility. I'm going to be showing you where our collections are and uh, going over uh, basically how you would go about doing archival research here. And it's the same kind of process if you're at another archives. If say you went to uh, the U of C to go access the amazing archival holdings of the Glenbow, um, or if you went to Library and Archives Canada in Ottawa, it would be the same kind of process that I'm showing you today. So although it's focused on MRU, uh, this is sort of more widely applicable if you're thinking about doing research uh, at an archives anywhere, really. So let's get started. So I'm on the fourth floor of the Riddell Library and Learning Center. Uh, you can see the, the elevator is just over there. And here is the archives and special collections if you haven't been in the building. Um, that's our reading room. I'll talk about that a bit more and yeah, kind of our main entrance. So let's go inside and I'm going to point out a few, a few different parts of the facility and kind of again explain what it would be like for you if you were a researcher um, on your first uh, sort of uh, quest to do a bit of archival research. So come on with me. All right, uh, here we are just inside the door. So to my left, I have the kind of reception area of the archives and special collections. Um, this is where I would be sitting if I was doing a shift or one of my uh, archival technicians. Basically, we're here to greet you, to, uh, to sort of introduce you to the procedures that you need to know about in order to access our, our collections, um, and, and also to just help you with your research. So uh, there's always someone here whenever the archives is, is open. Again, once the pandemic's over and we're actually back on campus. Um, and yeah, if you went to another archives, yeah, there's always, always archival staff. Um, that are, are willing to help, really happy to help you with your research. Um, one thing you need to know, uh, if you come to an archives, one of the first things you're going to have to do, usually there's some sort of registration process. Some archives will ask for ID, they'll take down your credentials. This is just, this is just to uh, make sure if, if anything were to go missing or something were to happen to the collections that you're looking at. Um, it's just a way to track you down, basically. Uh, the other thing that they're going to do is they're going to get you to stash all of your belongings. So, you know, your coat, your bag, uh, your water bottle, your food, none of that is allowed into the reading room. Also, pens um, aren't allowed as well. Uh, so we, we do allow you to bring in your, your phone if you want to take photos of records. We're totally okay with that for the most part. Just turn off your flash um, and and we'll provide you with pencils if you don't have them. You can also bring in your uh, laptop, uh, that kind of thing, uh, or no, no paper as well. We're, we're okay with some places that are a little more sticky, um, but yeah, basically that's it. So everything else though would be locked up just over here in our lockers. Um, and the reason that we do this, you're going to find uh, when you're doing archival research that uh, archives are, I don't know, we, we, we don't want to be unfriendly, uh, but there are a lot more kind of rules. Um, and this is just because archival holdings tend to be uh, unique and irreplaceable. So, you know, that, that handwritten manuscript uh, diary that you're looking at, or that box of, of correspondence, um, if anything were to happen to those records, because they're unpublished, because there's only one copy of them, if anything happened to them, that would be it. That part of the historical record would be gone if, if those got lost or damaged or, you know, you spilled your coffee on them. So this is the reason why we tend to just be a little more, uh, I don't want to say rule bound, but kind of um, in archives is just because we want to make sure that the, the amazing, unique holdings we have are, are preserved and, you know, not just for today's generation, but for uh, future generations of researchers. So anyways, it's nothing against you personally, but we will get you to lock up all your stuff. Let's head, in, head, head into the reading room and I will tell you a little bit about that. So we are now in the archives reading room. So this is where you would do your actual research if you were going to be access our holdings. Um, and how that works is we have a nice online database that has descriptions, we call them finding aids, um, of all of our holdings. So basically you can, you can go to our database, you can put in your search terms and you'll find uh, relevant records that or records that that might be relevant to your research and if you want to look at any of those you would just talk to the person at the desk 
uh, they would go retrieve them from the, the our, our sort of storage rooms um, where they're kept in a very climate controlled uh, environment. This again is to make sure that they stay preserved. So we want to keep them cool and dry uh, and, and in the dark for most of the time. Um, and then uh, they would come out. Usually they bring out a cart uh, with the boxes uh, that contain the records you've requested. And usually you get to look through a box at a time. Um, a couple little things. When you're doing archival research, archivists will tell you beforehand exactly what the rules are. A lot of places, uh, well, not, not a lot, but some places now still want you to wear the white gloves on your hands. Uh, we aren't that strict about that. Uh, I don't know, old school archivists go in for that. Um, not so much the current generation, but you, you will be briefed before you start your research on how to handle things properly. Because again, we just want to make sure that they stay preserved. Um, uh, some of the other things you need to know, keep everything in the order in which you find it. Original order, the order that we sort of received it, and often, which is often the order in which the records were placed by the, uh, by the person that created them, um, is really important. It can tell you a lot about how they were used and it can really contribute to the meaning of the record. So never, never move things out of order. Don't take things out of files and set them aside. Um, and again, archivists will kind of will tell you before you begin your research, but yeah, try to just treat everything with respect, keep it in the same order. Um, and when you're done with that particular box, you can usually let the person at the desk know and they'll grab you another box. Um, I should mention too that this space is where we usually would hold uh, our, the archive session that we're doing virtually right now. Um, so yeah, I hope it would be great at some point please come visit us, uh, take a look at, like once we're reopened, um, you know, once this pandemic thing uh, blows over, it'd be great to actually see you in person. We're always, you know, despite all the rules that I keep talking about, we are like, the reason that we're here and we have these great collections is because we want them to be used. We want students like yourselves um, to use them for your, your assignments. Uh, we want faculty to use them for their research and for their teaching. Um, there's no point in preserving the stuff if it's not used. So please, please, please come in. Um, we are more than happy to help. And there's really something special about getting to look through uh, historical records, um, like original historical records in person. You know, the smell of the papers, the tactile feel of the things, seeing someone's uh, signature. Uh, it just, I don't know, it, it, there's, there's a real thrill to it. So I'd really recommend um, at some point, if you have any interest at all, uh, Try archival research, it's, it's great. So now I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. You've seen kind of the front public end of the archives and special collections. We're gonna go behind the locked door behind me um, and see one of our storage rooms. So this is where the collections kind of live uh, permanently. All right, let's head back there. So here we are in one of our storage rooms. So this is where our collections sort of permanently live. Uh, a few things you should know about archival storage. Um, one is, I mentioned this before, but we are in a climate controlled space. So this means that we have a special uh, HVAC system that makes sure that we keep sort of constant and low temperature and uh, relative humidity because if you have too much heat or moisture in the air, it can really speed up the rate at which uh, a lot of organic materials um, like papers and you know the, the things that make up photographs um, manuscripts, that kind of thing, uh, it, it speeds up the rate of decay basically and things break down much faster. So if you can keep it dry and cool and dark, um, it really helps preserve things, which again is, is the big part of our mission. You know, we want to preserve things, we want to make them accessible and those kind of go hand in hand. So uh, behind me you can see we have all this compact shelving. So these are the things, you know, you roll the, the shelving rolls along on tracks. Um, so we can fit an awful lot of stuff in here. We have um, quite quite significant holdings now, um, all sorts of stuff, and I'll talk about this in greater detail in another video. But um, everything from archival and published records, so you know, correspondence, reports, uh, meeting minutes, uh, diaries, that kind of thing, to um, rare books uh, and other kind of publications. So. Let's just go down a row. I'm just going to show you kind of what um, archival storage looks like. So if we move right down here, you'll see this is just typical kind of row. Um, archival storage doesn't tend to be much to look at because everything is in boxes. So every when we receive um, a new donation, we have to process it. So we get it into these nice acid-free boxes, which uh, again kind of help preserve things because 
They don't contain, the cardboard doesn't contain acids and lignans and other chemicals that, that break um, organic materials down. And we also put everything into nice acid-free file folders as well. Um, everything gets, uh, every file will get a title with a date and it gets uh, its unique sort of um, uh, number so that when you're searching through our online database and you go, oh, I'd love to take a look at this particular file or this particular diary, um, you just give us that number and we can go, we know exactly in which box to find it and where it is on the shelf. So a lot of being an archivist is kind of keeping track of things. So there you go. That's a typical uh, Hollinger box of, of archival records. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes though uh, things come in, in different formats. So this is a part of a big sports collection that we got a little while ago, a Canadian history, sorry, Canadian sports history collection called the, the Blaine Collection. Um, and this one, the donor actually put everything in it into these nice, uh, I mean, they're, they're just kind of binders, but in nice uh, sleeves. So these are, these are um, baseball programs uh, from the 40s and 50s uh, related to different Calgary sports leagues uh, that we had here. And anyways, he did such a crazy good job of, of preserving it and also putting in all sorts of supplementary information that whereas usually we kind of rehouse everything, in this case, we'll keep it exactly how it came in. I talked too about how uh, original order is so important. So anyways, so yeah. So just imagine this row times 20 uh, and maybe you get uh, an idea of kind of the total extent of our collection. Um, as I said, there's all sorts of stuff. I didn't mention before, we've got lots of um, sort of uh, audiovisual material, so a lot of uh, photographs, audio recordings, video recordings, things like oral histories. And yeah, this is, again, I'm, I'm really speaking today to what the Mount Royal University Archives and Special Collections has, but uh, this, is, this is kind of the deal wherever you go. Um, you know, whichever archives you visit is going to be uh, somewhat similarly laid out, uh, and, and they might have collections that are, are somewhat similar to ours. Um, though, if you go, say, somewhere like the Glenbow or the Provincial Archives of Alberta, uh, their collections are on just like a scale to a whole new level. So anyways, this has been a quick introduction to the Mount Royal University Archives and Special Collections and the wonderful world of archival research. So yeah, I hope it's been useful. And again, as I said, um, please feel free once the pandemic comes to an end, uh, we're all hoping for that, and, and we can come back to campus, please come visit us because we're always happy to have you work with our holdings um, and, and also just to, to come into the space, the archives reading room, you can also just use as a quiet study space, so it's good to know. All right, thanks very much.